a solid red state like South Dakota, conservative Republicans have an iron grip on power. But they've made people angry by trying to take power away from voters. And the voters are in a fighting mood. The tradition of populist rebellion dates back to 1898, when South Dakota became the first in the nation to give citizens the power to overrule politicians through popular ballot initiatives. You know, you just go in, all the candidates would be listed on a single ballot. And so here in Sioux Falls, reformers take their fight directly to the voters. You know, it, it takes control away from the parties, gives it back to the voters. So I'm running for the Senate, but I ain't a big wheel. In 2014, Rick Weiland ran for the U.S. Senate as a Democrat, campaigning on getting money out of politics. Weiland lost, but a ballot measure to raise the minimum wage won a solid majority. Ballot measures are about opening up our democracy and letting people have a voice again, getting people to, uh, to believe that it matters again. I'm hoping. Weiland teamed up with his friend Dre Samuelson to form TakeItBack.org, a citizens movement to take on South Dakota's power brokers. After 28 years in Washington as a Democratic Capitol Hill staffer, Samuelson had given up on DC and come back home to push for reforms. People are turning to ballot initiatives simply because they have no other place to turn. They stitched together an unlikely coalition of South Dakotans across the political spectrum, including Sioux Falls former Republican Mayor Rick Noby, now an independent. We don't suffer from gridlock, we suffer from one party domination. With only 47% of the registered voters, Republicans hold every major state office and 85% of legislative seats. The folks are angry, and justifiably so. News reports of serious corruption in state government angered many South Dakota voters, like Alan Brummer. They say that South Dakota uh, is the fifth most corrupt government in the country. Now, you know, I, there's one category we don't want to be up toward the top. With help from national reform groups, Weiland and Samuelson collected more than 20,000 signatures to put an anti-corruption measure, I am 22, on the 2016 ballot. The sweeping reform called for limiting campaign contributions, greater exposure of funders, and giving every registered voter $100 in vouchers to donate to state candidates of their choice. As expected, the state's Republican powers, Governor Dennis Dugart and U.S. Senators John Thune and Mike Rounds, came out against IM-22. But the heavy opposition artillery came from the powerful political network funded by conservative billionaire activists Charles and David Koch and their flagship group Americans for Prosperity, who bankrolled attack ads and mailers. The Koch brothers aren't coming in uh, to South Dakota for any reason other than they see this as a very significant fight and they want to be sure that they stop, nip this in the bud before it spreads. Despite the odds against them, reformers rode a wave of anti-establishment anger and won a surprising 52% majority for the anti-corruption measure. The reformers had caught the Republican establishment off guard. Some folks got concerned and said, Mickelson, have you read this? I said, no, but I will. Mark Mickelson is speaker of the state legislature and South Dakota political royalty. Both his father and grandfather were governors. Initiated Measure 22 it is um, 13,000 words, 35 pages, amending South Dakota statute. There were some problems with it. But under South Dakota law, voters have the final say, or so everyone thought. <laughs> Lawmakers, alarmed by reforms that would help challengers, turned against their own constituents. I've had private conversations with many of you that said, if we don't repeal this, I'm resigning. South Dakota voters did not fully understand what they were voting for. In an unprecedented move, the legislature called a state of emergency and by a party line majority, vetoed IM-22 and simply rejected the will of the people. When you have 
super majorities in both houses and you control the governorship and every statewide elected office, you don't have to listen to the voters. The people and the politicians clashed again in November with rival ballot initiatives. Neither side got all it wanted. The Republican speaker failed to block future citizens' initiatives, but he made them harder to pass. Reformers came close to passing a new ethics and anti-corruption measure, but they fell short of the needed majority. Now they're already gearing up for the next round. It's the system that's the problem. It's not the people. It's this, we have to change the system. This legislature, with 85% of Republicans, want to make it more difficult to do that. That just is wrong, and we're going to fight it tooth and nail.